God heals you through your spirit. This is our topic for discussion today. And this video is being prepared for people in general, but specifically for the group belonging to the Divine Healing Questions and Answers page on Facebook. I recently did a posting there, and it was covering four points from Kenneth Hagen book, Seven Things You Should Know About Divine Healing. I inserted four of the points. Number four is know the difference between God initiating healing and man initiating his own healing. Through the gifts of the Spirit, God initiates healing. Man initiates his own healing in faith on the Word of God. Number five, healing isn't always instant. Number six, God's method is spiritual. God's method of healing your physical body is spiritual. It isn't mental or physical. God heals you through your spirit. Proverbs 20, 27. Your body will say you don't have healing, but your spirit will say you do. You have to get healing settled in your spirit first. And number seven was to maintain healing. You must develop your own faith in healing. But we're discussing number six, that God's method of healing is spiritual and God heals you through your spirit. Let's pray. Father, I pray for anyone who hears this message, no matter where they may be, what time it may be, what country they may be in, Lord. I pray the prayer that Paul prayed. I pray for the eyes of their inner man to be opened to the truth, Father, that they are a spirit and that you being a spirit heals them and works in their life through them, the spirit. And so, Father, I thank you that by your spirit you enlighten the eyes of their understanding to this reality, Father, that is true in them and in you. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. In Jesus' name, I ask it, and I thank you for it, and I send this as a seed going forth into all the earth to bring about your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. God heals you through your spirit. You know, there's been a lot of discussion, maybe not so much these days because there's more teaching, but years ago, 30, 40 years ago, when I began to be taught about the truth of spirit, soul, and body, there was a lot of controversy that the spirit and the soul could not be divided, that they were one. And this was taken, they were taking that from uh, the discussion of the inward man and the outward man that the scriptures speak of. But we know in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God tells us 
that the soul and the spirit are able to be divided, that they are two separate entities. Looking at that verse, I guess what I want to really impress on you today is the fact that you are a spirit. Now, I know that your head and your mouth may be saying to me right now, I know it. But the true test is, do you know how to receive from God through your spirit? Because what God does in your life, he will do by coming through your own new creation, your own spirit, where his spirit dwells. The greatest truth that you can learn, well, I know they say that about a lot of different things, but I guess I could say one of the most fundamental truths that you can learn is that you are a spirit. You know, we were so blessed, my husband and I, shortly after we were born again, to go to the new a church that taught primarily the new creation realities, spirit, soul, and body. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Hebrews 4.12. And we, and we had songs in our song service that we sang all the time. And they poured that reality into us. And we'd go home and sing them. And I'd sit and sing them to myself to make myself aware that I'm not what I see here. I'm what I am in here. James, the body without the spirit is dead. The spirit is the real you. James, here in Hebrews 4.12, says, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will divide asunder the soul, and the spirit. The joints and the marrow, that means no matter how close, like joints and marrow, thoughts and intents of the heart, things that are seen so joined that they cannot be separated. Well, man's reasoning cannot separate them, that's for sure. But the word of God is able to divide asunder spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Proverbs 20, 27. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man. Say, my spirit. My spirit is the candle of the Lord. Lighting up my inward being. <laughs> My spirit, Proverbs twenty twenty seven. King James says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's where discerning the thoughts, intents of the heart, the will of God in your spirit, your emotions and things that are in your soul, discerning them. But one of the versions says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, lighting up his inward being. And you know, I like that. I like that version. Think about what that is picturing. I see a lamp inside of me, in my spirit, in my inner man, in my new creation. And that lamp is lit. And it's lighting up my inward man. Oh, if you're in pain right now, if you've got physical things that you're dealing with, if you could just turn your eyes inward. Oh, hallelujah. See, right now I just hear the Holy Spirit and he's saying to me, Turn your eyes inward rather than outward or upward, for the answer lies within. Turn your eyes inward rather than outward on your circumstances, your pain, or upward toward heaven. This is what we're speaking of today. God heals through your spirit. He has already put the answer within. You have to hunker down. 
You have to focus on that inward person. You know, I remember Kenneth Hagin Sr. saying one time, he went weeks without even knowing he had a body. How, what is he talking about? He meant that he became so aware of his inward being, his inward person, his new creation, Christ in him, that he walked in that consciousness for periods of time and didn't even realize he had a body. It is possible. I have done that myself. It's a wonderful place to be. It's called the supernatural life. Naturally supernatural. Hallelujah. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, lighting up your inward being. And I think about the verse in the Gospels where Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And I put these two verses together. And I say, hmm, Lord, that's interesting. I am the light, of, and you lit up my inward man. And if I was in the spirit right now, and we could see beyond this veil of flesh, what would we see? We would see the light coming out of our inward man. We'd see the darkness coming out of the children of the wicked one. So it is true. Spiritually, you are the light of God shining forth from your inward man that is going forth into this world. We just don't see it because of this veil of flesh. Reminds me of that children's song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> Hallelujah. God heals through your spirit. God's method of healing you is spiritual. It isn't mental or physical. And God heals you through your spirit. Your body will say you don't have it, but your spirit will say that you do. Going over to Romans 8, again, God heals through your spirit. You are a spirit. Say, I am a spirit. I possess a soul. I live in a body. This really is turning into more of a little discussion of spirit, soul, and body than it is healing. But this is so fundamental. I was looking up a verse the other day that says, uh, my husband has encouraged me with it. I have encouraged him with it when we have had illnesses and things we've been dealing with. That a man's spirit will sustain him in his infirmity. I looked up several different versions of it, and I'll post some of them on the Divine Healing page. I may put some of them here in the YouTube video down below the description also. But your spirit is what energizes the body. I mean, even in natural people. If their spirit leaves their body, their body dies. So even people that aren't born again, there's a, there's a living quality, an animating quality that's in the spirit of a person that animates the body. So the spirit, again, is the one who's doing the work, who's doing the life-giving, even in a person who isn't born again in their body. So in our bodies, as believers, the new creation, the life of God that has come to live in us, that has made us new creations, that lives in our spirit, is what is animating our bodies also. But it is quickening our bodies with the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Going over to Romans 8 now, 8 11. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So let's stop and answer that right now. Does the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you? I assume if you're listening to this video that he most likely does. If he doesn't, there's a very simple way to solve that. 
Just come before Jesus right now and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart with your life-giving spirit. And I thank you that you hear me and that you come in and that your spirit dwelling in me will quicken my mortal body, will lead me and guide me, will lighten my life. Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for cleansing me. I believe you died on that cross and shed your blood for my sins. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive that cleansing right now. And I receive you into my heart. And then thank him for it. And then say with us, yes, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And going on in verse 11, Paul says again, If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Jesus from the dead, and who's the he? God. God raised Jesus from the dead. The God that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells where? In you. He will quicken the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body by his spirit, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Going on. Down here, I want to look up another verse in here now. <clears throat> Where it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 8, chapter 8, verse 16 in Romans. The spirit himself, King James Version says itself, but I like to say himself. The spirit himself. <laughs> Doesn't that just sound wonderful? The spirit himself. Glory to God. The Spirit himself that raised Jesus from the dead. Oh, Whew. the Spirit himself. Three little words. Oh, let's suck the honey out of the rock. Let's eat the manna. Praise God. We hush. We hurry too much. Sometimes who wants to eat a meal fast? <laughs> Savor every bite. The Spirit himself. Oh, and then just picture. Him going into the into the tomb where Jesus was lying, buried three days, and raised him from the dead. That spirit. See, go back. It was that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That the Father God, through whom then the Father God quickens your mortal body. <laughs> the spirit. And see, the key here that I want to get to is the spirit bears witness with your spirit. Doesn't say your mind. Doesn't say your body. Doesn't say your emotions. Doesn't even say your will. Because sometimes your will is just contrary. Say, I don't have it. And your will will argue with the will of God that's in your spirit. Two wills. You have your own human will in your soul and you have the will of God in your spirit. And they can get into it sometimes. Your spirit will argue with God's spirit. Will argue with God's Word in your spirit. You just have to slap it down and say, shut up. God said it. That settles it. Put your will on a chair and look at it. And say, sit down, boy. God said it. That settles it. Do you hear me? God said it and that settles it. Your will will get the picture. I mean, who's the boss here? Is your will the boss? Or is God's will in you the boss? God's word in you the boss? <laughs> I'm really getting down to this spirit, soul, and body stuff now. Hallelujah. Just, just put your will on the chair and say, no, you don't. God's word said it and that settles it. And I choose to believe it. God heals me through my spirit because his wit spirit bears witness with my spirit. He put his spirit within me. He put within me a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. 
With joy will I draw water out of the well of salvation that's on the inside of me. God heals me through my spirit. I want to read Brother Hagin's statement again. God's method of healing is spiritual. Well, he does it by spiritual means through the Holy Spirit. And his word, his word is spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. When you feed on the word of God, then spiritual operations are taking place. Spiritual operations. God heals you through a spiritual operation. See, our physical head can't figure out how can it get from spirit to, to physical. From the spirit to the physical. From the spiritual to the material. Just tell your mind to sit down and shut up. That's just another place. Oh, Jesus. Psalms 131 verses 1 and 2 says, I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned from his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child, and I don't mind things too high for me. There's just some things that your head does not need to figure out. You just need to believe it. Sometimes that's what makes it so hard for us. We go around trying to figure everything out all the time. I want to go over here to Ephesians. The Lord gave me this verse. Well, he didn't give me the verse. I mean, it was been in here. But it just, oh, my, 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 my. One day, it just came to me, just came alive to me. It says in here, Colossians 2, For in Christ, I'm going to start with verse 9, For in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, here is the key, through faith in the operation of God. Did you see yourself get born again? Did you see the circumcision performed on your heart of God cutting away the sinful nature? No. You had faith in the operation of God. God performed an operation on you. And you had faith that his operation was successful. You still do. That you're a new creature in Christ. That you've got the inward witness that you'll go to be with the Lord if you die. You still have faith in that operation that God performed on you when you got born again. You didn't know at the time he performed an operation on you. All you knew was that you got your sins forgiven. That you were set right with God. That if you died the next instant, you'd go to be with the Lord. Your books were settled with heaven. But as we read Paul, we find out God did an operation on us. <laughs> yeah. And now our heads just need to have faith in the operation of God and not sit around and say all the time, how did he do it? That's where Psalms 131 comes in. I don't mind things too high for me. The things that belong to the Lord belong to the Lord and the things that he's revealed belong to me. And I don't need to know how God does everything. I just need to know that he does it and believe it and receive it. Do it, Lord. Do it. Now, you know, right now, the thought's coming to me about Mary. When the angel came to her and told her she was going to have a child, she said, how can that be, seeing I know not a man? She wanted to know the how of it. He said, well, the Holy Ghost will come on you and overshadow you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he gave her, the, gave her the reason, how it was going to happen. But she just didn't go on and on and say, well, now, how can that be? The Holy Spirit's spirit, and my womb is flesh, and how is that going to happen? How is that spirit going to cross over the barrier into my flesh and make me pregnant? Hmm. She didn't go on and on about it, did she? No. She said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. God's spirit bears witness with your spirit. Your spirit is his candle. He heals you through your spirit. Now, I want to go back here, though, for just a second at what Brother Hayden said. He said, God can initiate healing also, and I don't want to discount that. Okay? But he says, know the difference 
between God initiating healing and men initiating their own healing. Brother Hayden said, know the difference between God initiating healing and man initiating his own healing. Through the gifts of the Spirit, God initiates healing. You can go up in a prayer line. You can have someone pray for you. You can have them pray the prayer of faith. That's another way that God heals. Here, you're going to another person to have hands laid on you, to have healing ministered to you. But what we're talking about here on the Divine Healing Questions and Answers page is to help you Learn how to receive on your own. What if there was no one around to pray for you? There are people in foreign nations. They have no prayer line they can go and get in and have someone pray for them. So they, I want to teach them how to initiate their own healing. How to initiate by knowing some of these truths that what they need is in here. Hallelujah. And you know, a lot of times I did a, did a message here a while back. And I can't remember what the name of it was, but the Lord showed me. He said, the minute, he said, what happens when a nursing mother hears her baby cry? What happens when a nursing mother hears her baby cry? Well, immediately the milk starts flowing. The baby doesn't have to beg for the milk. The baby just has to drink. And the Lord, isn't the Lord, that's the, that, that, was, that was the verse that I used. El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Is the Lord any different? Jesus said, if you being natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father not give good things to those that ask him? So, would God not be like a natural mother? The Lord said, the minute you, your inward person, he told me, he said, the minute your inward person begins to think on these things, that I'm in you, that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, that I am the Lord, thy physician. I am the Lord, your peace. I am the Lord, your provider. He said, the minute that you turn inward and begin to think on those things, the milk starts flowing. He said, I don't hear, I am as, I'm, I'm the many breasted one. I'm like the mother. My milk lets down right away. My life starts just flowing. We don't have to figure it out, saints. We make it too hard. I just have compassion on all of you that make things so difficult all the time. The devil just wants to twist you around, twist you up. There's just no need for it. I'm in a river <laughs> of the sweet Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel him bubble and I feel him flow. Yes, I'm going to let him go wherever he wants to go in me. I'm going to let him go wherever he wants to go in me. Oh, yes, I'm in a river of the sweet Holy Ghost. I just want to look at my little men here for a minute. Now, see, this is the way that you were before you were born again. You weren't light. You weren't the light of the world. Your spirit wasn't the candle of the Lord. But when God performed that circumcision, that operation on you, and cut away the old sinful you, he gave you a brand new you. See here? Now we have our little man. The spirit of man is the candle 
of the Lord lighting up. Lighting up. Lighting up. Whew. The light of life. The light of health. The light of peace. The light of righteousness. The light of faith. It is no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and anyone who follows me shall walk not, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of life. He's in you. He's the light shining. He's the life flowing. His is the faith that's overcoming. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now here's our Father. Do you see? Now he's a spirit. He has a spirit body here. But I want you to see he's put the same substance in you that he has in himself. And he flows, he flows, he'll flow right across into your spirit. That's why it says in the beginning, God said, let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness. The word image, if you look it up in the Hebrew, it means of our substance. The word likeness means of our shape, our form, our form. So when God said, let us make man in our likeness, what did Jesus say God was? He said God was a spirit. So if God made you of his substance, then God made you a spirit. Why did he make you a spirit? So he could put his spirit in you, spirit to spirit communication. His spirit bears witness with your spirit. He made you a spirit because he's a spirit. He has spirit children and he puts them in a physical body. He gave you a soul for communication for this world and with him. And he put you in a physical body. He put you in a physical body. Hebrews says God is the father of spirits. Hebrews chapter 12. So God, again, what did Brother Hagin said? God heals you through his through your spirit because he is spirit he pours his spirit into your spirit when you need healing he pours what he is the healer he's the raiser from the dead his spirit he the spirit raised Jesus from the dead I'm going to get myself confused in a minute trying to explain this to you <laughs> I don't want to do that I don't want to complicate it. It's just very simple. You, and another way to put it, I heard someone explain it this way, again, at the new creation church that we went to. It's like an ocean and a bay. The water that flows in the bay is not separate from the water that flows in the ocean. The water, the new life that flows in you, is the same life, the same water that flows in the Father. And it just flows back and forth. It just flows. Smith Wugglesworth said one time, Jesus is up, Jesus is down, Jesus is up. What did he mean? He said, Jesus is up in heaven. I'm, I'm probably not going to get this right, but you'll get the idea. Jesus is up in heaven. He comes down into me, and then he goes back up in my praises. It just flows. It's just a flow. It's just a flow that goes on. I'm in a river of the sweet Holy Ghost. His Spirit bears witness, his spirit, bears witness with your spirit, bears witness. You know what is bearing witness? It's a kiss in the spirit, a little, whoosh. we had a song several years back called Butterfly Kisses, just a little butterfly kiss. Sometimes it's an inpouring. Just, that's how he communicates with you all day, spirit to spirit communication. It's not always your soul. You know, here we have here we have the, the little soul man. I talked to you about that before. Before you get your mind renewed very much, your soul isn't always aware of 
walking with him, of him in here. Your soul is not aware of him in here. Your body may get the goosebumps once in a while and goes, whoo, there he is. Well, he's there all the time, whether the goosebumps are or not. Hallelujah. But the more you get your mind renewed, this little person right here, then the more conscious you are, the more God conscious you walk, the more healing conscious you walk. That's like I, the series I've just done, the couple little videos I just did on the coronavirus and how Dr. John G. Lake overcame the bubonic plague during the outbreak in Africa. How? Because he walked more conscious. He, he said because it, they, the English said to him, how have you done this with no protection? He said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Dr. John G. Lake walked in such consciousness of this that was on the inside of him, connected to the Father, the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, that set him free from the plague, the law of the plague that brought sin and death, or the law that brought the plague, the law of sin and death. So you don't have to understand how God does all this. Just believe it and receive it. Say, Father, I thank you. And just be like the child. Just sit back and drink from the breast. Hallelujah. Healing is the children's bread. We don't have to beg God for it. Oh, sometimes there's a little bit of a struggle, a fight of faith. I had a very interesting thing happen to me just about a week ago. All of a sudden, I had a pain on my back. I thought it was a backache. Well, it wasn't. It turned out to be shingles. I've never had them before. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of teaching coming up here on standing against inward corruption in our bodies. Shingles is the product of having had chicken pox as a child. So I'm 73 years old. I probably had chicken pox when I was six or seven. So after all of these years now, that inward corruption has come out and assaulted me. We think about diseases coming from outside, and we stand against those. That's like Dr. Lake used Romans 8 too, to, to keep from getting the bubonic, like every disease and virus germ that touches my body, touches my body, dies instantly. Well, what if it's in the body? So that's just another avenue I'm going to be looking at. But I'm fine today. Encouraged in the Lord. And alive with what I'm sharing with you. And I just count it a privilege to be able to share the things with you that I have learned over the years. But I am excited now. Because it's like another avenue of understanding healing is going to open to me. As I look at bringing the word of God to bear on inward corruptions that may have entered into us through childhood diseases and different things like that. So that's another subject and I won't go into that. But I just want to close again today. God heals you through your spirit and you really coming to the understanding that you are a spirit that you possess a soul, that you live in a body. God made you in his image, and so he made you a spirit like him. When you first get born again, you don't always understand that. But the more, the more that you study and ponder and eat and think and meditate and suck the honey out of these truths that I am a spirit, God heals me through my spirit. Whatever God wants to do in my life, he comes through my spirit. His spirit and his word work in your spirit. Hallelujah. Seems like I wanted to, oh, I know what I wanted. As I was sharing earlier about the songs we had at the New Creation Church, I just want to share one with you today before I go. I mean, this has been 40 years. Um, 40 some years ago and I still sing it to myself because the flesh realm speaks so loud and it seems so real all the time.
but you have to keep telling your soul that you're a spirit because your soul interfaces with this world. And so the soul gets focused on the physical. So you have to keep bringing the soul back and looking at the truth from the word of God that says you are a spirit. I am a spirit. And see, don't sing it fast. And close your eyes and think about it. I am a spirit made in the image of my Father God. I have his nature made in his likeness. And I am full of his wonderful love. Yes, I'm a spirit. I am a spirit. Made in the image of my Father God. I have his nature. Made in his likeness, and I am full of his wonderful love. Well, it's just been a pleasure sharing with you today, and help me to spread this message to others. God has given me a word for this year uh, about seeds. How many seeds in an apple and how many apples in a seed? And this is my little seed. And let's see how many apple trees that we can grow from it. Trees of healing. The leaves of healing for the nations. God bless you all. If you'd like, you could sign up. If you're on Facebook, you can sign up for my Divine Healing Question and Answers page. And I also have a page dedicated to John G. Lake there and another one for John Alexander Dowie, who was Dr. Lake's mentor in the healing ministry. So I just want to encourage you and sign up for my YouTube channel if you would like. Help me spread the word. God is good. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord, and in him you are complete. Ann Windsor, signing off for today.